So it's time for another ranking video, and sometimes when I do these, we're talking about some of my favorite franchises where there's multiple movies in the franchise that I love, so it's very difficult to put them in order and pick which one's on top. Other time, there's a very clear best movie in the franchise, but today we are talking about the Fantastic Four movies, a franchise that has never quite had that definitive, beloved film that's on top. In fact, it's struggled quite a bit. Two of these movies have very interesting backstories about the production and everything that went wrong all along the way. So this is a different type of ranking video, but I had fun re-watching these movies, taking notes and watching some very interesting productions along the way. So with that said, before I dive into it, go ahead and tell me down below in the comments section, what do you think about the Fantastic Four movies and how do you rank them? Which one's the best? Which one's the worst? Or in your mind, is it a worst to worst type of ranking. With that said, let's go ahead and dive into this and start talking about Rotten Tomato scores. Now, this was very interesting to me on this one. Coming in in last place was Fan 4 Stick from 2015 with 9%. Then, in third place was Fantastic Four 2005 with 27%. Then, in second place was The Fantastic Four from 1994 with 29%. That's only got seven reviews counted, so... Take that with a grain of salt. And definitively in first place with only 37% though is Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. So that's what the critics had to say about it. I also put out a Twitter poll. Sometimes when I do my ranking videos, I ask you guys for your take on it. On this one, I put out two Twitter polls, which is the best Fantastic Four movie and which is the worst Fantastic Four movie. And the results actually gave a pretty cohesive picture of what you guys thought about it. If you put it the two charts together definitively you guys put fan four stick in last place then in next to last place you had the fantastic four from 1994 in second place you had fantastic four rise of the silver surfer and definitively you guys picked fantastic four 2005 as the least worst or the best of the fantastic four movies so that's what the critics had to say about it that's what you guys had to say about it Here's my take on the Fantastic Four movies. Coming in in last place is Roger Corman's The Fantastic Four. Now, I feel bad putting this one in last place, but it's not watchable for me. I rewatched it actually on YouTube just a couple weeks back, and it's it was really tough for me to get through this movie on many different levels. If you don't know the background on this, basically the studio made the movie just for the purpose of keeping the rights, so they made it dirt cheap, they didn't tell the cast and crew that the movie wasn't going to be released, and so you're watching a Fantastic Four movie made on an absolute shoestring budget, and it just shows throughout the entire movie. There's not very much action in it, all the costumes look incredibly cheap. All of the fantastic, like Mr. Fantastic stretchy arm stuff is the cheapest gimmicks you can imagine. If you have Adobe Premiere, you can do better Sue Storm invisibility type effects. It's, it's really difficult to get through at times. And it's not just the fact that the special effects are cheap. Production design is cheap. There's also plot issues all throughout the entire thing. There's this guy called the jeweler that wants a diamond and kidnaps a blind artist that he wants to marry, so he's gonna give her the jewel. Doctor Doom legitimately laughs like, <laughs> throughout the entire movie. And so it's a very cheesy movie. And this is coming from someone that I actually kind of like, the 1990 Captain America movie. I've got a pretty good threshold for some of this stuff, and this one is kind of just below the line of what I can stomach. So this one pretty definitively comes in last place. And I do feel bad. I want to be able to like Roger Corman stuff, but I, I just did not dig this at all. Coming in in third place is Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. Now when they first announced Silver Surfer was gonna be in this one and Lawrence Fishburne was going to be voicing him, I was very excited about that. I thought that was gonna help take the franchise, step things up a little bit. But re-watching this movie just a couple weeks back, I had a lot of plot issues with it. And by a lot of plot issues, I mean there's way too many plot lines for the length of this movie. Now this movie is only 90 minutes long, but there's a wedding, the team struggle with the public eye, the team breaking up, government's involvement in trying to regulate them, Silver Surfer shows up, Galactus is showing up, the return of Doctor Doom, and then there's some power swapping issues going on. And when you've got a movie that's 
only 90 minutes long. That's just way too many plot lines. It felt like so much setup was happening with so little payoff and such quick payoffs that none of it uh, kind of got you involved emotionally in what was happening. It's also really light on action. The first action sequence isn't until 30 minutes into it when you got a 90 minute movie. You're a third of the way movie until through the movie until you get the first action sequence. That's a problem for a superhero movie. And then just even the way they decided to visualize Galactus, obviously a major letdown to present him that way as opposed to a gigantic man in space. So overall, this movie just did not work for me. There wasn't anything in here I actually liked because there was just way too much stuff happening in the film. Coming in in second place is Fantastic Four 2015. Now this is easily the most frustrating film on this list because I think the first 45 minutes is actually really good. And I can see why some people don't think it's fun enough or the tones off are fantastic. Four. Fair enough criticisms, but I enjoy it for what it is. And then it goes off the rails. And that's what I'd heard going into it. I was late to the party. I didn't see it in the theater because I'd heard such bad things about it. So when I was watching it the first time, I was like, I'm really digging this. This is actually working for me. And then as soon as there's that year long gap in the movie, you just see the reshoot, bad special effects, a story cobbled together, a middle act that's just like squished together and we rush straight into the third act, sky beams, cliches, I mean, just it all falls apart. And if you haven't heard the stories on this one, supposedly right before they were about to start shooting, the studio told Josh Trank he had to cut like three action sequences out of the movie because they were just slashing his budget. And so he went into production having to reshuffle it on the script and, and cutting all the action out of the movie. Then he shoots the movie, supposedly had a meltdown, was doing drugs, showing up to set three hours late, drunk or something like that. And then in post-production, they kicked him out, they reshot it, they redid his movie. And then like the day before the movie came out, he tweeted out like, too bad you guys will never see the movie I was gonna make. The movie I wanted to make disappeared about a year ago when they hijacked my production. So weird production all across the board. It sounds like he screwed up, they screwed up. And the end result is a movie where you really go, I wish we could have seen that original Josh Trank film that they were making, because that one easily would have been the you know a mile above every other Fantastic Four movie for me. But the end result, what we have is half of a movie I really dig and then half a train wreck, a really interesting train wreck. So this one to me is, uh, is probably the one I'll end up re-watching the most on the simple fact that I'm fascinated by the nature of the badness of this one and just watching a movie just fall apart before your eyes. And coming in in first place, basically by default, it's Fantastic Four 2005. Now this is a movie that people have kind of picked on and thrown punches at basically since it came out and somewhat for good reason. It feels a little bit lightweight when you compare it to the current Marvel movies and how well they've been able to execute things and have entertainment and nail the tone of being serious and comical at the same time. This movie just feels a little bit off by comparison, but re-watching it, uh, I think people have been way too hard on this movie. Especially, like, I watched it and I thought, if this was the pilot episode of a Fantastic Four TV show, I'd be thrilled. I'd be like, this is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna love this show. And, and that's somewhat a criticism in and of itself in that a movie shouldn't feel like the pilot for a TV show, but it's also not the worst thing in the world to feel like the setup for an ongoing series of episodes. The structure of it is what I mean by that. It, it has a pilot vibe in this nature of the scenarios they're in and the scope of the threat from Doctor Doom throughout the film. And Michael Chiklis, I think, is perfectly cast in this. There's some elements, to, you know, Chris Evans was probably a good Johnny Storm for that point in time in his career. There's just a bunch of things to enjoy in this movie. It's not a great movie. It's not one that I revisit a lot, but it's one that when I do rewatch it, I think to myself, people are way too hard on this one. This isn't a train wreck. This isn't just kind of a dumpster fire or anything like that. It's just a movie that feels a little bit like a comic book genre trying to figure itself out. And that's kind of what really was going on around the year 2005. You know, as I said, it's not as refined as the current MCU, but neither is the DCEU. And so I can appreciate what this movie is. I think people are a little bit too hard on a lot of those mid-zero Marvel movies that they were throwing out back then. There's a lot more to enjoy in them than I think, uh, you know, the internet and comment sections give them credit for. Anyway, that's my take on the Fantastic Four movies. Some of you guys shared your thoughts on the Fantastic Four films over on Stardust. Here's what you guys had to say. This movie just has to be the worst 
Fantastic Four movie. This movie is just an okay movie. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not great. I love this movie a lot. And it made me really like The Silver Surfer, but that was the only thing I liked about this movie. Everything else was just horrible. As a kid, this was one of my biggest guilty pleasures, but uh, re-watching it as an adult, whoo, <laughs> yeah, movie, but definitely, definitely better than Fan Four Stick. Which was Fan Four Stick was the worst Fantastic Four movie. This movie 100% deserves its 5 or 6% score on Rotten Tomato because it is just bleh. I stopped watching about halfway through because I couldn't take it. Nothing had happened in the first hour and... I mean, the casting had potential, but, you know, it's just the script and the plot and everything about it was atrocious, man. Um, actually, I think it was a decent enough movie. Uh, I didn't fall asleep. So there you have it. Some of you guys were very critical of the Fantastic Four movies, and other of you were actually kind of okay with some of these movies. At the beginning of the month, I told you I was going to do a few giveaways this month, so I gave away a movie on my Iron Man review, I gave away a movie on my Iron Man 2 review, and I'm about to do one more giveaway. Some people shared their thoughts over on Stardust of some specific movies that I mentioned, and they tagged me in their review, and when they did that, they entered to win some of these digital codes and our latest winner is going to be who do we have here movie man one two three movie man one two three so if you can tell me down below in the comment section where i can contact you to like give you the list of movies i still have and you can get a picture of that digital code and you can have that delightful film for yourself hey if you want to enter into the, my final giveaway i'm doing next saturday on my maze runner ranking all you have to do is review on stardust one of the maze runner movies or all three of the maze runner movies you do it three times you enter in three different times and you'll be entered to win and you gotta tag me here's what this looks like if you don't know what Stardust is. First off, it's an app for your smartphone to basically review movies using your smartphone. You can download it at that link down below in the description. It's totally free for Apple and in the Android store. And then once you download it, follow me first. You can see my name on that red bar right there. When you record your reviews for different movies, especially ones that I'm gonna do giveaways on or tell you I'm gonna share your thoughts in my videos, tag me in the video so I can see your pretty face and know to include it in my videos. It's that simple. Like I said, next Saturday is Maze Runner. So if you can review the Maze Runner movies on there and tag me in your re reviews of them, you will be entered to win. I've got the digital codes for both of the Maze Runner movies and several other movies in the mix as well that you could potentially win. With all that said, if you are new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, TV reviews, ranking videos, but the key thing is I don't wanna just talk about movies. I wanna talk about movies with you. So join me down in the comment section. Let's have a lively discussion. And as always, thank you so much for watching.